well greetings from New Zealand um, I'm doing the rocker cover gaskets on my Ford Probe which is a Ford GT in America I've watched a couple of videos not been very impressed so I thought I'd show you the easy way to do this it takes about an hour and a half I'm an old fella retired and and just cruising it so hopefully this will help you from getting into some of the what seems to be silly things that people do when they're doing this job now at this point I've already done my rocker cover gaskets and if you can't do that you shouldn't be tackling a job this size anyway but one of the important things to notice is that I have not disconnected the whole manifold. There's no need to do it. Just looking for a lot of work and a lot of grief. It's good if you've got the tools like a pipe extractor. And another tip is to try and keep all your nuts and bolts together. I just use a little toolbox. Mark it up. Each set of nuts goes in its right place and I then write it down in a book it takes an extra 10 minutes to dismantle but boy it saves a lot of time after now before I got onto the main dismantle I will start back almost in reverse so your two problems when taking this, this apart is this here which has a 12 millimeter nut that attaches to the back of your intake manifold. Now, a lot of people curse and scream, but it's very simple to get out. It took me five minutes, and I'll show you that once I've dropped everything back into position. You also notice that all the vacuum hoses, you, you don't need to disconnect them. None of them need to disconnect. There's no problem. You just need to take the three power switches out of them. And again, on assembly, I'll show you. I will repeat this again. This hose here connects to this hose here. Crucial, obviously, that you drop that on as you're putting the head back on, as you're putting the manifold back on. It's not a problem. There's plenty of space to do it. I found it very easy. So again, I'll have a little look, let people have a little look around just so when you tackle the job yourself. If you notice, I've got dusters in, in the intakes because you'll, you'll have problems if you drop anything down there. And for those who are technically minded and interested, I'm taking these pictures on the new Osmo Pocket. Great camera, it's got a gimbal on it about the size of a big marker pen you can tuck it in anywhere the gimbal moves lets people see whatever's going they want to see okay I'll assemble and then I'll come back and I'll give you some tips okay step one is I would photograph your engine just so in case you get stuck on your cell phone on because they are quite complicated little engines I'm just doing a purge at the moment okay so the first thing we do Remove all, remove the intake, all straightforward. Remove your HT leads, mark them all up, bring them down the front of the car. They can sit comfortably between the radiator, they're right out of your way. A little buzz bar on the front here, you need to remove just two number 10s. This pipe, it's a breather, has to come out. A 
again just number 10s and in the next pad I'll show you where you need to remove stuff pretty obvious stuff here these pipes are obviously breathers just un disconnect them only at the one end pretty obvious stuff but I'll just show you the battery box um, got one 12 mil there one 12 mil nut there one 12 mil nut right there that will remove the whole battery box it's the only real thing that's uh, bulky in your way and the rest of it's pretty easy to, to put, put back okay there's one vacuum pipe here which you disconnect by here under the valve that allows that fuel rail to lift without any problems right I thought I'd better include removing the throttle cable just for those of you who are not really that familiar with it it's quite simple you, you simply depress depress the throttle depress the throttle with your hand and the cable comes out of the channel which is here and you have a little bobble end which you just pop out but you have to push it right the way around then rem to remove the throttle itself you'll see two tabs I'm, point I'm point pointing them now I hope they're coming out that one and that one squeeze the tabs and pop it out then remove the bracket which is two number tens the bracket it just makes it easier when you're getting it out just to pass the body so remove that bracket at the same time okay just a few things that you need to remove to lift the head off all quite simple stuff we have one plug two plugs three plugs you need to remove the engine lifting mount which is a number 14 just down in there again not really a big problem there is a white plug down underneath your carburetor which I didn't move you can move it's a little bit awkward to get to it didn't really cause me a lot of problems but if you feel you should move it remove it remove this breather hose here at the bottom of your carburetor just that one don't need to touch anything else on the carburetor then under here you have an S-bend going to the back of your intake valve which comes from the body and it's an S-shape and goes in the back there you need to remove that take that off completely so it doesn't get in your way right on the other side of the engine all you need to do is to remove the vacuum bracket that is here two number 10 bolts pop three switches one two and three fairly simple no real problems there and it has what is like a holding bracket which just sits just sits in here I think it's more of a protection than a, um, than anything else it just sits there and it has two two number two number eights two number eight that's on the top I hope you can see that move back a bit so so the two number eights one two on the top and two number tens underneath once you remove that just push it out of your way and it shouldn't shouldn't be any problems for, for, for while you're taking it off the throttle cable that has to be disconnected that's just straightforward simple stuff just a little bracket on here and just pop it off to the back and that's it that's all you need to take off to actually lift it 
it, it is advisable to take if you've got them your HT lead holders if you've got them on the front one of mine's broken just whip them out of your way uh, you can bend them but it's easier just to uh, a number eight little little number eight and move the thing off and that's it that'll remove out of there the rest of this stuff here I'll show you at the final it, th this stuff is just uh, your, your, your basic um, airflow meters and stuff so okay I'm trying gonna try and show you where you can see the mystery boat now if you look down the back of the manifold you, you see here a pipe you just look down below it right there where that red pointer is and you can see our little mystery boat now, I had no problems at all putting that in here's my fingers on it I'm turning it not sure if you can see it I'll get the camera right in there it might be trouble focusing because there's so many things in front of it I'll come back out a bit I might try zooming in on it later but there it is there easy to get in easy to see okay I'm just doing this part just to show you you drop the intake manifold just loosely on the top and you can see down through here quite easily that you can rejoin that pipe without too much without too much difficulty before you place the head in position okay I'll just drop that on and uh, start the bolt up and I'll come back and show you more okay I've popped that intake manifold into position it's better if you can get someone maybe to, to just give you a hand uh, I mean I did this myself but it's a bit of a stretch um, you notice that when it's in position that you can in fact still rock it that's quite normal it's it's part of the number 12 bolt that's the uh, the problem bolt on the back what I what I tend to do at this point is because this is quite a stiff unforgiving fuel pipe I would install that fuel pipe now because it can get a little bit tricky once you bolt down so I have my bolts in position four front bolts but I've not bolted it yet so I'm about to proceed to connect up the petrol okay trying to focus in on that pipe you can see your fuel pipe here has two washers one one side one the other make sure they're on if you don't it's going to get a leak that's why I've got a duster under here in case you drop them they're copper so they're not not magnetic and I've positioned my manifold nuts and bolts you've got one nut on either end and four center 12 millimeters and two inside here and two here and the same nuts on the end again I would use a magnet to drop those into position there's no point in dropping them and spending hours looking for the damn things okay I'm gonna bolt that up and I'm going to torque it I'll give you the torque measurements after, thanks.